I can't believe it. It's unreal. The big 5-0. It's one of the wildest things I've ever seen. Now, Ridley Gregg does have one more point than Morgan Riley over the last five games, but Riley has him beat in plus minus. What? Oh, that big 5-0. Let's go! Good. We all feel Stop! good. Stop! Never gets rusty what am I doing? into my kitchen. Producer Drew, can you fix all this? <sighs> And when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple, crumple, yeet! Saw that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Uh, Leafs win! Six to three over the Arizona Coyotes. Steve, where's victory puppies? Oh, oh, you're not getting one tonight. But Steve, the Leafs won. Oh, they did. Iggy didn't. Dude. Late start tonight, and actually, thank goodness it was a late start tonight, because right around 9.40, 9.45, right around when a game would usually be ending for the Leafs, Iggy is outside. He's often outside. He's a dog. He likes it there. That's where he poops. But he very abruptly no longer wanted to be outside. I opened the door to assist him in no longer being outside, and a huge waft of what had just happened smacked me in the face. He's gonna be nine years old in about a month, and for the first time in his life, your boy got sprayed by a skunk. Yep! Yep, that was my night. Leafs outshot the Coyotes 16 to six in the first period, outscored them three nothing. I didn't see a second of it. Going to the 24 hour vet, buying all sorts of weird shampoo, going to Walmart and buying all these weird ingredients looking like an episode of Breaking Bad. Well, I was mad. I was mad that I was missing this game. I saw on my phone, oh, Bobby McMahon scored. That's, that's cool. I like when Bobby McMahon scores. And then, <laughs> You ever have a, like a once in a lifetime talent on your team? You ever have that? And they score at one of the greatest goal scoring paces in the history of the National Hockey League. That has that ever happened? And they have an opportunity to hit 50 in their hometown and then you miss it! Oh, I was, I was upset. Anyway, he smells less bad now. I uh, basically worked the entire game to get the house and the dog and myself and everything I own to smell less like skunk, easier said than done, in a basement that has so much carpet. Steve, you used to work at the zoo, does that mean you love animals? It means I love most animals. If I ever catch Pepe Le Pew in my backyard again, I'm grabbing the first right-handed hockey stick I see, and it's on sight! But overall, I was quite happy with the Leafs' performance, so that was nice. Bit of a discombobulated video, wasn't expecting it to be quite like this. I mean, listen. Looking at this game as an entire product, rather than breaking it down in the order that it happened, I'm extremely happy with how this went. Really? They were up 3 nothing, and then they almost blew it, and then they scored a goal, and then they almost blew it again. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. Great games, good performances don't have to be perfect. But dude, the first goal, TJ Brody, who's been going off, I want him to play on the left forever, throws it in front, Bobby McMahon with the one-handed tip, like he's just been doing this. He's up to nine goals already, how dare you, and the Leafs are up one nothing. Less than two minutes in, by the way. And then less than five minutes in, the Leafs on the power play, and the main attraction, Austin Matthews. Matthews and Lilligren. Lilligren, another dude who, like, maybe doesn't want Riley to return to the lineup. Lilligren gets it to Matthews. This is not even a good angle. Like, dude, this is, this is what elite talent is. Matthews often, on the power play especially, take shots that I think penalty kills are like, yeah, go ahead. But it's him, so he scores. It's his 50th. It's in Arizona. It's fantastic. 2-0 Leafs, nice and early. Before the first period is done, the Leafs on a scrambled rebound. He only got the secondary assist, but I love the work from John Tavares here to separate his opponent from the puck. Gets it to Marner, who shows patience. Gets it to Willie, who shows the back of the net what a puck looks like. 3 nothing Leaf lead after one. Now, did it stay 3 nothing? No. John Tavares took a penalty. The Leafs had to kill a penalty. They did kill a penalty. Guy Tavares took the penalty on Sean Dursey, who the Leafs drafted and then traded, and he has decided he's going to make them pay for it every time he plays them. But shortly after the kill, Matias Michelli scores, and the Coyotes are in the game. Sheldon Keefe 
loses his mind. This is where, on the broadcast, Nick Kiprio said something that I, I don't know if a lot of people loved. Gotta tell ya, he's right. Cause Sheldon Keefe just goes off, just goes off on officiating. And I don't think he should. Heading into the playoffs, preparing for the playoffs, you gotta play the game within the game, man. Was the call on Tavares good or was it bad? And was there a call missed beforehand? I tell you what, who cares? Can you maybe say something to the ref? Yeah, maybe say something. But Keith was going off and refs don't like that. Usually, you know when they like that even less? Show it there. That's the first period penalty summary. Do you notice? Do you, do you notice something? There's four penalties. Did any of them go against the lead? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. You got four power plays in the same period. Now listen, I didn't say that the Leafs didn't deserve those power plays. I am saying if the penalty count is 4-0 and then it magically turns to 4-1, don't yell and scream about it because they don't like that. Even if you're watching this right now going, but he's right, it doesn't matter that he's right. Since when has being right had anything to do with it? Ever seen a minute of playoff hockey? If you haven't, have you seen a minute of regular season hockey? Right, okay, you have. So did you see how it didn't make any sense? All right, playoff hockey makes less sense than that. Refs are made of flesh and bone and feelings do not make them mad. And do not scream, that's all on you, at them. Because then when Barrett Hayton scores exactly a minute later to bring the Coyotes to within one, because the Leafs couldn't get the puck deep, the ref can then turn around to your bench and go, yeah, who was that one on? That's all I'm saying. That's basically all the criticism I have for the Leafs in this video. I otherwise really, really like their game. Because rather than letting the Coyotes tie it, Mitch Marner said, hey, what if I just ripped out their throats? A ridiculous between the legs pass to Brody and if Brody scores this oh my goodness it still ended up being kind of cool it went off Matthew's shoulder and in that's his 51st they took away Brody's assist and Marner has the only one I don't really know why they did that like dude here's what a stupid goal scoring pace Austin Matthews is on so Marner has been ridiculous right like he's been extremely good especially lately would you agree he's one of the best playmakers in the NHL well he is he has 46 assists that's enough to put him Eighth in the entire NHL in assists. That's so many assists. He's one behind JT Miller and Kale McCarr. He's one ahead of Matthew Kachuk. That's so many assists. Despite that, and despite the fact that you can award two assists on a single goal, Matthews has five more goals than Marner has assists. That is not to diminish Marner. That is to say, Matthews is a mutant from the X-Men. I would have loved to have been in the scouting box when he was playing games in Zurich. Like this scout represents the Sabres, this scout represents the Leafs, and this scout represents Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. I know it went off his shoulder. Shut up. He's incredible for two Leafs. And late in the second period, Pontus Holmberg takes a penalty. He shouldn't take a penalty, but the Leafs did a good job killing most of the penalty. And then, very close to the end of that penalty, William Nylander decided, I hate Sean Dursey so much, I'm gonna take a penalty right now. He takes a penalty, and then the Coyotes score, and then you have to kill off another penalty. And that's how we're gonna begin the third period with the Coyotes within one, and you gotta kill a penalty. Yeah, it spells disaster, doesn't it? For them! Timothy Jimothy Brody sends it up the ice. William Nylander, out of the box, on a breakaway, snipes it past Corral the Malka, who seemed primed for a 75 save performance against the Leafs, and don't pretend like you didn't think it was coming. Leafs go up 5-3, and this is where they pull away. Bobby McMahon, yes. To Nick Robertson, yes. To John Tavares, yes. Leafs win 6-3. Samsonov is what 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 is it eight and one eight oh and one over his last nine games he's ridiculous I'll talk about the defense a little later in this video I, I want to talk about the forward groups dude if before the season you suggested that the Leafs throw out a line of Nick Robertson John Tavares and Bobby McMahon I would have kicked you down the stairs and I would have been right I would have been applauded and then you watch it and gosh it makes sense like dude let's go through the lines for this game Matthew Nyes Austin Matthews Mitch Marner you know what Matthews and Marner are gonna do, and that's some ridiculous circus nonsense. Matthew Nyes, be big, be belligerent, be a jerk. You dig in the corners and you crash the net and you make life generally miserable for the defense while they have to contend with one of the most ridiculous duos in the league. Robertson, Tavares, McMahon. Where's the reprieve there? McMahon is fast, big, belligerent, like he, always uses that body to try to win pucks. John Tavares, the little thing king, 
really difficult to beat along the boards, really difficult to take the puck off of. Yeah, the speed isn't quite there, but you have to admit, once the game slows down a little bit, it's really hard to take the puck off him. And then there's Nick Robertson, who gets crushed a lot, but here's the thing, he's he's just got a million lives, and he's willing to die every time he takes the... Like, he, it doesn't matter what you're willing to do to him, it's what he's willing to take. It's a shockingly great offensive line that's just willing to work harder than you are. Then the one that I didn't even know I needed... Bertuzzi Domi Nylander. And this, this to me is the straw that stirs the drink. Dude, every great playoff team has a maul line. Steve, what's that? It's a line that mauls you! Every whistle is something, let alone what they're gonna do to you between whistles. Dude, every freaking whistle, if Dursey or anyone else had anything to say to Nylander, first of all, Nylander pushed back. You you made the chillest dude in the league angry, and then you get Bertuzzi's smelly glove and Domi's smelly glove, and you're lucky to get Domi's smelly glove. You're lucky you didn't get Domi's smelly fifth, too. You need two. You need at least two. Because in this league, jerks enable each other. You can't just assign a jerk per line. The playoffs are a battle of attrition, and Bertuzzi, Domi, Nylander, all extremely capable offensive players. They can score, but in absence of that, you're gonna have to deal with some nonsense after the whistle. You're gonna get tired. You're gonna try to catch your breath, but guess what? You're gonna try to catch your breath against one of the Tavares line or the Matthews line. Have fun, have fun, you can try. And the fourth line? Ah, it's the fourth line. Like it functions as a decent fourth line. Defensively responsible, they get the occasional scoring chance. They can skate really well, and they hit. Like, dude, that's a hockey team. Then there's the defense and questions. From James, I really like this one. Timmy and TJ are absolutely cooking since being paired. Two assists each tonight. Do we have a balanced, dependable D pair for the playoffs? If so, is Morgan screaming, Brad! to get a solid stay-at-home RD in a trade for tomorrow night's game. Okay, well, I don't think it's gonna happen in time for tomorrow night's game. Speaking of which, Morgan Riley comes back, hooray! Don't know if William Lagesson's gonna be available. In absence of that, it's either gonna be LeJoie or Rafai who come out of the lineup. I assume Rafai, but who knows? Like, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna break up Benoit and McCabe? Not really, no. Okay, what do you wanna do? You wanna break up Brody and Lilligren? <laughs> Not the way they're playing, no. So that leaves us with Riley and who? Like, we know that you can give Lilligren a little bit more responsibility, a little bit. And we know also you could put Brody on the left. Put him on the left! For the short term, yeah, you probably put Brody on the right with Riley, who's on the left. Yes. Long term, wouldn't it be great? Benoit McCabe. Here's your third pair. Brody Lilligren. Here's your second pair. You can interchange them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Depends on the situation. Doesn't matter. Riley. Mm. Like, what's that? Mm. And all of a sudden, my wish list is down to one. One. It's a bit of an expensive one. A top pair right-handed D. But it's one. Oh, we need them to get this up front and goaltending. And no. No. Sammy's been great. Jones has been adequate. Wool is coming back. I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried. We might have too many pretty soon. Up front, you know what? They needed secondary scoring. Needed. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good recently, and they, they have the best primary score in the entire NHL. Back end? I like one of the pairs they got. I like two of the pairs they got. And the one pair I don't really like has their best defenseman on it. Get him a friend. Get him a partner. And all of a sudden... That five game win streak, and I'm looking at them on paper, and I'm getting a little bit too excited for February. Listen, tomorrow, Riley's returning. Tomorrow, second half of a back to back. Tomorrow, road game in Vegas. It's a five game win streak. It's gonna be real tough pushing it to six. It's gonna be real, real tough. But wow, have I been impressed with what this team has pulled off over the last week and a bit. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that you can become an SDP 
VIP by joining the SDPN YouTube channel as a member where you can get an extra episode of the Steve Dangle podcast every week. Also on Apple Podcasts, same thing, STP VIP. And newly, STP VIP on Spotify. It just it took a little while longer, but it's there. Oh, and the basement stinks!